Just a minute or two, so if you could uh, start to fill in, take a seat. Uh I'm Stephen Gardner, Amtrak CEO, and it's a great pleasure to be here on such a beautiful day and such an incredible spot. And, you know, it's an embarrassment of riches what's going on here in Connecticut. This is the third major bridge groundbreaking in this great state that I've attended in just the past 18 months. Um, whether it's Walk Bridge, Devon, and now Connecticut River, bridge, it's clear that incredible things are happening here in Connecticut, and that Connecticut, across the state and its leaders, are prioritizing infrastructure investments and making the type of foundational improvements that are not just about fixing today's problems, but about setting up the state and the country for a prosperous future. If you ride down the Northeast Corridor from here, you'll see a whole series of bridges that are in various states of either planning or getting started. And just south of New York, there's Great Bridge going up right now, Portal Bridge. We're at 60% complete already on that. We've got early work starting on the Susquehanna River Bridge in Maryland. And we've had the incredible privilege, as I said, of being here already twice to see generational, once-in-a-lifetime investments. This has been overdue for a little while, right? Um, because we shouldn't, as the most developed nation in the world, be relying on something built one year before the invention of the lollipop, <laughs> made possible by the Biden-Harris administration's focus on infrastructure and the bipartisan infrastructure law. $800 billion in projects she's got, $1.2 billion in Connecticut rail projects alone, and $66 billion for rail generally. So makes this look like a cheap date compared to all the other things she's doing. But let me introduce uh, the Deputy Secretary and thank you, her again for her incredible leadership. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm not sure this is a cheap date, but definitely. Um, uh, thank you. It is it's such a beautiful day to be here. And look, on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, Secretary Buttigieg, and all of us at the Department of Transportation, and I'm proud to say, here I can say it, President Amtrak Joe, uh, honored to be here today to celebrate the kickoff of construction uh, on the replacement of the Connecticut River Bridge. And look, I, I know today is a bit of a, a bit of an emotional day for folks. Um, I recognize there's been a tragedy in the river here that is ongoing, and I know you were dealing with the aftermath of the flooding here in Connecticut. And I know is here, the Amtrak team, you mentioned the bridge guy. Um, I was transportation commissioner in New York City for many years, where we had 800 bridges, also a lot of aging beauties like this one, and um, moments like this are what the bridge people live for, the chance to 
you know, rebuild and invest in the workhorses of our bridge inventory um, and do it right. So it's exciting. Thanks to Amtrak and the team. It's an honor, as you say, to be here with the remarkable leadership in Connecticut, Governor Lamont, Senators Blumenthal and Murphy, Congressman Joe Courtney, uh, CDOT Commissioner Garrett Ugolito, who we work so closely with, and, and thank him for his leadership. And really excited to be here with the folks representing the men and women who are going to build this project. Uh, Connecticut State Building Trades Council President Keith Brothers. Um, would really like to give him and those men and women a shout out. Um, excited for all the labor partners that are going to build this new bridge. And I want to thank the contractors and the small businesses also that will be working on this incredible project. Um, in, in my time as commissioner in New York, just uh, a little bit south of here, I actually got to work a lot with Tudor Perini, who did some incredible work on one of the most challenging bridge projects I had there, the, the um, City Island Bridge. So I know they're, they're going to do great work on this project. Uh, as Stephen mentioned, also a big thanks to our US DOT team, Federal Railroad Administrator Amit Bose and his whole team. We have the FRA Program Administrator Dan Broadhag, who is with us today. He will be the one working closely with Amtrak and the State DOT and all the partners up and down the Northeast Corridor to do this project and a whole bunch of others. Um, I know we also have a lot of local elected officials here today. Thank you for being here. Um, I, uh, I, I'm fortunate to come from Connecticut stock. My mother grew up in Connecticut, and, and my cousin Tracy Wilson actually served in the legislature here. So I know firsthand all the great work you're doing for the state. Thank you. Um, it is wonderful to be here today to celebrate a groundbreaking on a bridge where I'm happy to say USDOT has provided almost a billion dollars of resources, um, $830 million through our Fed State Partnership, another $130 million through our State of Good Repair funds, and thank you to the state for and Amtrak for bringing the matching resources so we can get this project underway. And I know you heard from Stephen how critical it is. Um, we've, we have gotten to actually celebrate a few of these projects up and down the Northeast Corps, and it never ceases to amaze me, the hundreds of thousands of people they serve, the important economic role they play. Turn to our congressional partners, and uh, as as I said before, Amtrak's never a unitary actor. We always are doing this in partnership with others. And um, at Connecticut, we have incredible unanimity around the investments that we're making here. And that is something that we don't see always in all the states that we operate in. And it's something that I will never uh, take for granted and never cease to want to recognize because it is special and it is what is making so many things possible here right now in Connecticut. So I want to turn um, to Senator Richard Blumenthal and recognize him for his leadership. Uh, like uh, his colleagues, he shares a passion for this work and a very healthy impatience about getting to the benefits. And we appreciate that guidance and leadership. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Steve. Yes, we are often impatient and uh, and passionate, uh, but thank you for your leadership and to uh, Deputy Secretary Trottenberg, thank you for being back in Connecticut, but most of all, thanks for the money. And uh, we love you for your money, <laughs> as well as your leadership and the Secretary. Uh, I want to thank Governor Lamont, uh, who has been steadfast and strong in favor of Rayo, uh, Chris Murphy and I and uh, Joe Courtney do what we can to advocate for the whole system. It has to be viewed as a system that really is vital to the entire Northeast because, as we all know, if part of the rail system goes down, it all becomes useless. I've been stuck between Washington and Connecticut because this bridge is down, or because the Walk Bridge is down, or the Devon Bridge. They are interconnected. That's the thing about rail. It is connective tissue for our society. And I want to join in thanking the workers who are going to be out there, along with DEP and DOT, the folks who are going to be out there in weather very unlike what we're seeing today when it's going to be raining and sleeting and cold and nasty they're going to be out there working represented by 
good unions and great union leadership. Thank you to Keith Brothers and uh, all of his colleagues. Uh, it's been overdue for a little while, right? Um, because we shouldn't, as the most developed nation in the world, be relying on something built one year before the invention of the lollipop. Made possible by the Biden-Harris administration's focus on infrastructure and the bipartisan infrastructure law. $800 billion in projects she's got. $1.2 billion in Connecticut rail projects alone. And $66 billion for rail generally. So, makes this look like a cheap date compared to all the other things she's doing. But let me introduce uh, the Deputy Secretary and thank you, her again for her incredible leadership. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm not sure this is a cheap date, but definitely. Um, uh, thank you. It is it's such a beautiful day to be here. And look, on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, Secretary Buttigieg, and all of us at the Department of Transportation, and I'm proud to say, here I can say it, President Amtrak Joe, uh, honored to be here today to celebrate the kickoff of construction uh, on the replacement of the Connecticut River Bridge. And look, I, I know today is a bit of a, a bit of an emotional day for folks. Um, I recognize there's been a tragedy in the river here that is ongoing, and I know you were dealing with the aftermath of the flooding here in Connecticut. And I know is here, the Amtrak team, you mentioned the bridge guy. Um, I was transportation commissioner in New York City for many years, where we had 800 bridges, also a lot of aging beauties like this one, and um, moments like this are what the bridge people live for, the chance to you know, rebuild and invest in the workhorses of our bridge inventory um, and do it right. So it's exciting. Thanks to Amtrak and the team. It's an honor, as you say, to be here with the remarkable leadership in Connecticut, Governor Lamont, Senators Blumenthal and Murphy, Congressman Joe Courtney, uh, CDOT Commissioner Garrett Ugolito, who we work so closely with, and, and thank him for his leadership. And really excited to be here with the folks representing the men and women who are going to build this project. Uh, Connecticut State Building Trades Council President Keith Brothers. Um, would really like to give him and those men and women a shout out. Um, excited for all the labor partners that are going to build this new bridge. And I want to thank the contractors and the small businesses also that will be working on this incredible project. Um, in, in my time as commissioner in New York, just a little bit south of here, I actually got to work a lot with Tudor Perini, who did some incredible work on one of the most challenging bridge projects I had there, the, the um, City Island Bridge. So I know they're, they're going to do great work on this project. Uh, as Stephen mentioned, also a big thanks to our US DOT team, Federal Railroad Administrator Amit Bose and his whole team. We have the FRA Program Administrator Dan Broadhag, who is with us today. He will be the one working closely with Amtrak and the State DOT and all the partners up and down the Northeast Corridor to do this project and a whole bunch of others. Um, I know we also have a lot of local elected officials here today. Thank you for being here. Um, I, uh, I, I'm fortunate to come from Connecticut stock. My mother grew up in Connecticut, and, and my cousin Tracy Wilson actually served in the legislature here. So I know firsthand all the great work you're doing for the state. Thank you. Um, it is wonderful to be here today to celebrate a groundbreaking on a bridge where I'm happy to say USDOT has provided almost a billion dollars of resources, um, $830 million through our Fed State Partnership, another $130 million through our State of Good Repair funds, and thank you to the state for and Amtrak for bringing the matching resources so we can get this project underway. And I know you heard from Stephen how critical it is. Um, we've, we have gotten to actually celebrate a few of these projects up and down the Northeast Corps, and it never ceases to amaze me the hundreds of thousands of people they serve, the important economic role they play. Turn to our congressional partners, and uh, as as I said before, Amtrak's never a unitary actor. We always are doing this in partnership with others. And um, at Connecticut, we have incredible unanimity around the investments that we're making here. And that is something that we don't see always in all the states that we operate in. And it's something that I will never uh, take for granted and never cease to want to recognize because it is special and it is what is making so many things possible here right now in Connecticut. So I want to turn um, to Senator Richard Blumenthal and recognize him for his leadership. Uh, like uh, his colleagues, he shares a passion for this work and a very healthy impatience about getting to the benefits. And we appreciate that guidance and leadership. Thank you, Senator.
Uh, thank you, Steve. Yes, we are often impatient and, uh, and passionate, uh, but thank you for your leadership and to uh, Deputy Secretary Trottenberg, thank you for being back in Connecticut, but most of all, thanks for the money. And uh, we love you for your money, <laughs> as well as your leadership and the Secretary. Uh, I want to thank Governor Lamont, uh, who has been steadfast and strong in favor of Ray Oak. Uh, Chris Murphy and I and uh, Joe Courtney do what we can to advocate for the whole system. It has to be viewed as a system that really is vital to the entire Northeast because, as we all know, if part of the rail system goes down, it all becomes useless. I've been stuck between Washington and Connecticut because this bridge is down or because the Walk Bridge is down or the Devon Bridge. They are interconnected. That's the thing about rail. It is connective tissue for our society. And I want to join in thanking the workers who are going to be out there along with DEP and DOT, the folks who are going to be out there in weather very unlike what we're seeing today when it's going to be raining and sleeting and cold and nasty. They're going to be out there working represented by good unions and great union leadership. Thank you to Keith Brothers and uh, all of his colleagues. Uh, Senator, um, I want to now uh, ask Senator Murphy to join us. It's really a, a, a dynamic tag team duo here, the two senators who both care so much about the rail infrastructure of this state and work in their respective areas of power in the Senate to make incredible things happen. So, Senator, please uh, come and uh, we thank you for all of your leadership and focus on this. Thank you. Well, uh, to Polly, thank you so much for joining us here today. It means a lot that you would be here for what is a very big day here in Connecticut. Great to see many friends here who have worked on this project for uh, years, if not decades. I hope you are all enjoying the shade uh, <laughs> in this wonderful tent. Um, listen, this is a special spot to me personally. Um, I've spent, my family spent uh, our summers uh, right here in Old Lyme for 50 years, and when I was uh, a kid, my parents would bring me to this very spot every single summer. It was one of the nights that I looked most forward to as we sat here and watched the trains go by, watched the bridge open and close, and we repeated that ritual with our children as well, in part because this is a spectacle. This is um, a sign of the big, giant, breathtaking things that this country does. Um, and um, I'm so excited that we're going to be able to renew that commitment to thinking big as we rebuild this bridge. Um, um, let me now ask Representative Joe Courtney to join us. Uh, Representative, I know this project has been a passion of yours for a long time, uh, and you've put all of that effort and energy into getting us here today, and I want to thank you deeply for it. Um, again, the ability of your whole delegation to work together to deliver results is incredible and uh, is really the reason we're here today. So, um, good morning, everyone. My 70s sunblock is wearing off fast, so I promise you I'm going to keep my remarks pretty quick here. Um, but, um, again, uh, Steve is absolutely right. I mean, you know, no single member of the House or the Senate um, by themselves can actually you know, get a measure through like the bipartisan bill. And it definitely took a coalition and all of us were on speed dial uh, during um, the fall of, of um, 2021 when this measure finally got across the finish line. In the House of Representatives, we went second before it went to the president's desk and it was like an explosion, a uh, spontaneous explosion when the, the, the tally was shown up on, on the board. People sort of knew without any planning that something really significant had happened. And, uh, and again, we're seeing that obviously uh, play out today. I also uh, want to join Deputy Secretary in terms of expressing uh, my condolences. I am sure everyone else is feelings about the terrible loss which took place here on Monday. Recognize the first responders, whether it was the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard Reserve, State Police, 
local uh, police uh, departments. We again have Martha Shoemaker here from Old Line, the first select woman, and Carl Fortuna uh, from Old Sabre. I mean, it was just amazing effort and still going on uh, as we speak here today. Um, to, to um, you know, again, address this terrible loss. And um, uh, again, it, it sort of brings us back to sort of what this project is about. In 2006, Amtrak contracted with an outside engineer to, to analyze uh, this bridge, and the um, finding that they came back was that the um, Connecticut River Bridge was structurally deficient and repair work was no longer capable of keeping it functional. Again, that was in 2006. Fast forward uh, 18 years, we're here today finally uh, to get this uh, project moving along. I remember I was talking to Carl. They had an Old Saybrook Historical Society birthday party for the Connecticut River Bridge. Uh, it was around 2008, 2009. Everyone dressed up in period sort of costumes and dresses that were there. They served tea. Um, but, you know, again, it was sort of... Um, you know, an assumption there that this was actually going to be a bridge that was going to be replaced because it was so blindingly obvious. Um, and anyone who's, you know, been on a boat and gone underneath the bridge knows that for a fact. That train was slowing down uh, as it came across that bridge for the, precisely the reasons uh, of safety. So, uh, again, it is just so um, exciting to finally see this uh, come to fruition. After the bill passed, the ink was barely dry. Um, again, the building trades of Connecticut were in touch with our office, and we got a commitment from uh, Mr. Gardner's predecessor uh, that this would be a project labor agreement um, enterprise, and that is going to guarantee that there will be locally, um, you know, residential uh, workers that will be part of this project. There will also be, um, you know, job training and apprenticeship programs that, uh, and you know, fair wages as part of this project. Uh, Ray Oniglia is here from ONG, who's the contractor. I want to thank him for, uh, again, being part of the team that put together um, the application uh, to get this uh, across the finish line. So, um, you know, again, what we uh, are all looking forward to is the day when, um, you know, we're, we're actually seeing an open bridge. Um, it looks like that's going to be about another three or four years. Hopefully we can make that even uh, quicker. Uh, Steve's comment that this is a once-in-a-lifetime uh, event. Um, actually, I think we're pushing life expectancy uh, calculations pretty far. <laughs> we're talking about uh, 120 years that it took to, to replace this bridge. But nonetheless, um, it is you know real tangible process. Uh, progress and, and, and really that's what our community and our state is looking for is real results to um, solve real problems uh, for the people of this state. So congratulations to Amtrak and all the uh, folks that are going to make this happen uh, in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you Congressman and thank you for your decades of focus on this really. Um, I want to now uh, invite uh, Car the uh, Commissioner of Connecticut DOT, uh, Gary Ugolito, to come up. Um, as I said, everything we do here, we do in partnership with uh, Connecticut and their great team. Um, Commissioner had the unfortunate task of following uh, his predecessor, who was uh, a legend in, in rail uh, uh, in, uh, in Connecticut and across the country, really, but has just done an incredible job. And um, I feel uh, like our partnership has never been stronger, and the work we're doing together is paying real dividends for the people of this state and for the whole region. So let me thank, uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner, and invite you uh, to come up. And again, thank you for all of your partnership and investment in this project. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. So uh, I'm Gary Ucolito, Commissioner of Connecticut Department of Transportation. Really excited to be here in Old Lyme uh, with Amtrak, our, our state and local partners, and our federal partners. Um, you know, I don't want to rehash what's been said. I think the partnership aspect is something I do want to touch on. It's, it's uh, you know, I think appropriate to be here for the bridge. We have a lot of bridges in our inventory too at Condot, which are um, in the same state uh, as this one. Uh, we were at a groundbreaking uh, for the walk bridge uh, recently with the FRA administrator uh, to, to advance that project. And so I've been in the job less than two years. I came in, my walls are empty. Joe took all his railroad memorabilia with him. Um, and so what I've been aiming to do is fill the walls with uh, shovels from groundbreakings. And, and we're getting there. And so we're doing big things, like Senator Murphy mentioned, you know, the federal infrastructure bill. Uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law is allowing us to think big and do big things. 
Um, and so we're starting. Um, it's going to be a long haul to get to where we need to go to reinvest um, in the aging infrastructure. Um, we're starting with groundbreakings like this today. We have a lot more to go. Uh, up to the stage uh, on behalf of Key Brothers and the Connecticut State Building and Construction Trades Council. We all know that these bridges don't build themselves. They're built by incredible craftspeople who uh, have spent decades learning their trades and bring their best skills to uh, these mines. Good afternoon, everybody. So as you heard, uh, pinch hitting for Keith Brothers today. Wasn't really prepared, but uh, just a few comments on my end. Uh, name's Nate Brown. I'm the business manager and president of the Operating Engineers. I also serve as the uh, State Building Trades Vice President. And I want to thank our congressional delegation, first and foremost, for having a vision to uh, get a bipartisan inf investment and in Infrastructure Jobs Act passed. Um, Deputy Secretary, thank you for being here today and joining us. Uh, Governor Lamont. And your team, Commissioner Ubalito, Mr. Gardner, thank you very much. Um, this is an exciting day for us. This is something that the Connecticut State Building Trades hear about. Uh, Large-scale projects like this that, that are coming around the corner don't happen that often until recently with the passage of that bill. Um, We're looking forward to seeing all those uh, folks at work. Um, now let me introduce the governor. Uh, really needs no introduction. We've re referred to his leadership throughout today's event. Um, the governor sees clearly both what can happen here with the rail infrastructure, uh, isn't shy about demanding that we figure out a way to make it happen, and deliver the kind of benefits that um, we know uh, this network can can do in the process. Let me just summarize uh, briefly. Um, you give a whole new meaning to the words made in the shade. Uh, we are envious. Um, Holly, I appreciate you coming back, and um, you and Mayor Pete and Joe Biden, you know, understand the importance of uh, transportation for a state like uh, us, what it means in terms of interstate commerce, what it means to getting people back and forth where they got to be. It's our future. It's the future of our entire region. Um, we have a lot of old infrastructure here, as you heard before. Um, this uh, this bridge behind me goes back to the era of William Howard Taft, or as Dick and I used to call him, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, as Dick pointed out, transportation is as strong as the weakest link. And there are a variety of links all um, up and down the Northeast Corridor. And uh, we cannot be the weakest link. And uh, everything we do here makes us safer and faster, and uh, we have to build back better. And I'll tell you what that means. Um, it was described to me by Stephen, um, you know, how is this going to be uh, very different? I, it has special meaning to me right now, given the fact that we lost a number of uh, bridges during the terrible flooding in the Naugatuck Valley. And we have to build them back in terms of extra structural support um, and extra culverts and ways we can reroute. Steve was saying, here, a bridge like this, one of the changes is it will be eight feet taller. I said, well, what is that about? And well, um, the boats are um, that much bigger than they were before. Um, Polly said when it came to uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge, they'd never seen boats that big, four times bigger than what we'd anticipated. And with sea rising, we got to be prepared. This will be another 100-year bridge, and we got to be prepared for what could go on from there. You know, and Chris Murphy, I think, said it so well, um, A, we could not do this without the federal government. Everybody's been the infrastructure of president going back an awful long time. I want to thank uh, our incredible delegation for fighting for this and uh, President Biden for getting this done. Uh, for a state like this, how meaning it is. Chris was just describing as we were in there with uh, Polly, you know, this corridor is, the, is our innovation corridor. From the life sciences in Boston, the life sciences coming down to New Haven, the back and forth traffic there, a new billion dollar engineering facility being built in New Haven, going all the way down to New York in terms of quantum computing and AI and the way we work together. And the rail is just absolutely key to our uh, connection there. And uh, in Washington, you've got Amtrak Joe. In Connecticut, we have our own uh, Amtrak Joe, Courtney. And um, he's been a champion um, here, what we've got to do along the coast to make it faster and easier for people to get around. 
and I really appreciate the fact that he um, highlighted the fact that this is good pain union jobs, PLA, um, and what that means in terms of uh, Connecticut jobs for Connecticut people. And um, I was looking over here, they kept talking about Keith Brothers, and I said, did he get younger and better looking? No, that's <laughs> Nate Brown. And, um, and representing all the folks who are uh, able to make this happen. And, um, and finally, just as Garrett alluded to, um, he does extraordinary work. These jobs are almost shovel ready. We're ready to hit the ground running. I think that's important to, uh, you know, the Deputy Secretary, and I want to thank Devin and our legislative partners, that so we do have a strong transportation fund. That means we can put up our $68 million now, no questions asked, and uh, there'll be a lot of uh, co-pays to go forward. But we're ready to do it, ready to take advantage of this, because it's so important, especially in a state like ours. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Governor. Um, this project is uh, not just about today, obviously, it's about doing something that's needed to be done for decades. It's going to take uh, some time to build this bridge. You'll see us starting on the grounds uh, both sides, building, getting ready for the approaches, and then start working on the columns in the water, and then bringing in the spans. Um, but through all these steps, uh, we know that we are creating something that's going to last for the ages and in the process create opportunity up and down this corridor across the state for the whole region and given the import of this region and the nation the entire country so um, let me also just thank real quickly the our, our uh, contractor partners ONG Tuta Perini and all the subs who are going to be working with our craftsmen and women here also uh, want to shout out Mr. Jim Matthews from the RPA, who represents all the advocates and supporters across uh, Connecticut and elsewhere, who add the often voice to these projects uh, in an, a very tangible, real way across the federal delegations and local communities, uh, and help highlight the need for this kind of work. We couldn't do all this without Jim's support and his team. So thank you. Um, we're going to now get started here with uh, kicking this project off. I want to thank again uh, Connecticut DEP for hosting us here, and uh, thank you all for being here for this day. Looking forward to being back when, uh, as uh, Senator Murphy said, we can watch with awe the opening of that new Basquiat span. So, thank you. So I think 
Exactly. It'll be, the new one's going to be much faster. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can get a picture of him up closer. You're right into the sun. <laughs> we got to turn a little. Sure, I got an extra hard hat somewhere. Okay. Never know. Yes, right. Never know.